At Dinjan Airfield, five miles from Chabwa, C-47s of the 2nd Troop Carrier Squadron line up and prepare to take off on one of their regular parapack food dropping missions. Some of these airplanes have been in service for over a year, dropping essential supplies and food to air warning stations, weather stations, Chinese patrols, Lido Road engineering parties, and advanced hospitals. Units that operate so deep in the Burma jungle that it's virtually impossible to keep them supplied by ordinary means. In many cases, the more permanently established advanced bases receive their supplies by a regular daily dropping schedule without the necessity of special orders. These planes operate over the jungles of the Naga Hills, which lie astride the border of northeastern India and northwestern Burma. The first run over the target is a blank to help the pilot estimate the wind drift and to warn the ground personnel to clear the dropping area, for men have been killed by falling supplies. Supplies to be dropped are stacked by the open door, light bundles on the bottom, heavy containers on top, to reduce the possibility of the slipstream carrying away the light parcels as the pilot comes in to make his run. On the co-pilot signal, the supplies are kicked and pushed out and down. This is a hazardous procedure as the parachutes are apt to foul the tail of the plane. Whether the dropping stations or targets are perched on the top of mountain ridges or hidden deep in sharp valleys, for successfully parachuting supplies, the pilot must fly over the station at an altitude of between 100 and 150 feet and at a speed of between 100 and 130 miles an hour. Greater altitude increases the risk of losing the supplies in the jungle. Greater speed increases the danger of bursting the parachute. Grain, sugar, shoes, clothing, blankets, and other supplies and equipment that can stand the shock of landing may be dropped without parachute when properly packed. After supplies are delivered to each station, the plane communicates with operations back at Dinjan, where on a large sector board, the plane's position is plotted so that in the event the transport is forced down or attacked by Japanese interceptors, its position is immediately known. Over the next target area, the crew prepares for dropping another batch of supplies. At normal dropping speeds of between 100 and 130 miles an hour, the average maximum load for a parachute is 120 pounds, of which about 70 pounds is payload. However, very heavy items have been successfully dropped by using clusters of two or more 150 pound capacity parachutes. This is a Jap installation lying between two of our dropping stations. Jap ground troops fired on our food dropping planes. Strafing P-51s set the installation afire. A system of signal panels has been devised as a means of identification between the dropping station and the plane. This is to avoid the possibility of dropping supplies to enemy troops that might have captured the target since the previous mission. The signal panel system also affords a limited means of communication. The plane responds with colored lights or flares. The planes slowly circle each target, and with each pass, supplies are dropped. Sometimes as many as 25 passes are required before the shipment is completed. Particularly valuable shipments, such as money, medical supplies, or surgical equipment, are marked by attaching a six-foot streamer to the parachute. Of the supplies and equipment dropped by parachute, 98% have been recovered. 
great skill and split-second timing are needed to make these precision drops. Its regular dropping schedule completed for the day, the C-47 sets out across the jungle for the trip back to Dinjan. A complete and detailed report on supply and food dropping activities is now being prepared by the 1st Army Air Force's Combat Film